This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Today's guest says he doesn't have enough faith to be an atheist. Dr. Frank Turk is a Christian apologist, author, and TV host, and founder of the website crossexamine.org. His mission is to arm Christians with the facts so we can better defend our faith. I sat down with him and discussed everything from the atheist worldview being taught on campuses, why there needs to be a creator, and much more with Dr. Frank Turek. Why, why apologetics? I mean, what, what drew you to, to, to I always cont- wanted to know contend, if it was, contend for the Yeah, faith? I always wanted to know if it was true. I didn't want to believe something that wasn't true. Yeah. And uh, so I had questions. And that's why my friend said, get these books, read these books. And I read them and I said, oh, you know, Christianity's true. And then when I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Geiser and began to do seminars mm-hmm. with him around the country, uh, we turned our seminar into that book right there. I don't have enough faith to be an yeah, atheist. That's, it's an amazing book. I have not, I got to confess, I have not read it yet. You can't be saved I, without reading I, it. I, I understand I, you know, that. I mean, come and on. I'm, I'm planning on doing that. But, <laughs> but apologetics, I mean, First Peter, uh-huh. are, are we all called to that? Well, everyone is called to have an answer for the hope that we have. Now, mm-hmm. obviously, people will have different uh, gifts and different talents, and they'll go into various depths, but mm-hmm. we all should have at least some reason that we say, here's why Christianity's true. And here's uh, why I believe it. Yeah, here's why I believe it's true, and here's why you can believe it's true mm-hmm. as well. And so, yeah, we should have answers for why we believe what we believe. So you got the answer. Why, why, why debate atheists like, like Christopher Hitchens? I mean, are, are, what's the point of doing well, something Well, the point like is not to try and convince the atheist that Christianity is mm-hmm. true. The point is to convince the folks in the audience that Christianity is credible. Yeah. And so whenever you do a debate on a college campus, you're trying to encourage the Christians in the audience and put a stone in the okay. shoe of the skeptics. So they go, oh, I hadn't thought of that argument. You know, maybe Christianity mm-hmm. has some credibility to it. Have you ever have you ever debated an atheist where you found a crack in their in their resolve? I mean, where they just where they convert where, themselves? Where, where they begin to crack a little bit and and how? Well, I look. My goal is not to convince the other guy. Mm-hmm. He's too invested in his position. Yeah. Again, you're talking to the audience. Mm-hmm. However, my my uh, co-author, Dr. Norman Geiser, years ago had a debate down at the University of Miami. And uh, the debater that he was debating came to the prayer meeting the next night. Yeah. So he was open. Yeah. Right. At least he most was open time, to hear more of yeah, it. Yeah. Most of the time you don't find they're mm-hmm. open. Well, you're on ca- college campuses a lot. And, mm-hmm. and, and before you walk in there, what, what's your prayer for the, and knowing there's going to be atheists in the room, you're going to have this wide audience. What, what's your prayer? When well, you my there? prayer is the same kind of uh, thing I just mentioned. You want to encourage the Christians and you want to mm-hmm. put a stone in the shoe of the skeptics. And uh, we're here in Ohio right now because mm-hmm. last night we were at... Uh, Purdue in uh, Fort Wayne, and tonight we're going to be at Ohio State. And uh, what we do is we present evidence on the college mm-hmm. campus uh, called I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, and then we take questions. And uh, we get yeah. atheists asking questions, which is always fun. And you normally get the atheist asking questions, sure. don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, hey, it, if you yeah. call it I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, atheists yeah, are going to show gonna up, sh- right? They're going to show up. They yeah, should yeah, show up. Yeah. But you, you po- pose this question to a lot of them. So I mean, you get down to the time, kind of the end of their, their argument, and you'd say, if Christianity is true, would you become a Christian? Yeah, that's a key question to ask. Have you ever had one say yes? Of course. Good. A lot of times they say no. Yeah. But, in fact, uh, sometimes they'll say yes, but... A lot of times they say no because they don't want Christianity to be true, right? They don't want there to be a God because they want to be God. They want to be God of their own lives. They don't want to have to answer to anyone. You see, most people are not on a truth quest or on a happiness quest. And they're just going to believe whatever they think is going to make them happy. And here's the problem. You can make yourself happy over the short term, doing a lot of fun but ultimately destructive things. So over the the long term, it's a disaster. And everyone out there who's over 40 knows what I'm talking about because many of us have tried to do it our way and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) They they have no, no, no vision for the end game? I mean, no, no vision for, I mean, once the, if, if, if the facts are there, the truth is the truth, and they see that it's true, they know there's an eternity. Well, they can, look, the human mind has the capacity to suppress the truth and mm-hmm. kick up a lot of dust and just believe what it wants to believe. Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 1, right, where he says that 
God's invisible qualities are clearly seen so that men are without excuse, yeah. but they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Yeah. And Christians suppress the truth sometimes. You know, we, we all say, that's inconvenient. It's I don't, inconvenient. I don't, I don't, I'm just going to ignore mm -hmm. that. I'm going to suppress that and go my own way. Yeah, I mean, God gives us a revelation. Sometimes we don't want God talking to us. No, we don't. <laughs> we, no, God's then, inconvenient. Then we're responsible. Yeah. Then we're responsible. Yeah. I, I noticed on your YouTube channel, as I look down through the comments, there are people following you at different times that, uh, that are theists, but mm -hmm. they're not necessarily Christian. Mm -hmm. A couple of Muslims I've seen in there. Sure. What, what's been your, re your, your response with them? Because a couple of them said, yeah, I'm following, I'm growing uh -huh. in faith. Uh, have you heard anything back from them? Well, I don't really engage in YouTube comments mm -hmm. too much. That would take too long, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, so, but there's plenty of people that will engage other people who are commenting mm -hmm. there. And uh, so we just keep putting out the material and we, l we leave the results to God. That's about the best we can do. Now, people do email us questions sometimes yeah. and we try and get back to them. We have a radio program where we answer a lot of questions. We have a TV show as well. Uh, and of course, on college campuses, we do so. We, that's what we try and do, ans yeah. answer questions. And if they go to our YouTube channel, the Cross-Examined YouTube channel, it's crossexamined.org right. with a D on the end of it. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of videos up there. Most of them are very short Q&A videos from the college campus. Right. And so they can follow along with that. Well, yeah. I, I want to get into some of the, how you go down through that, that evidence. Okay. And how, how you bring that to, to bear in a, in a college audience. Because as you watch that, it looks like there's a lot of Christians out there starting to think that more critically themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important to think properly right. because in our culture, we don't think anymore, we feel. Everything yeah. is visual rather than intellectual, and you can be easily misled by images and video and feelings sure. rather than the facts. It affects us emotionally. And, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to be right back in just a minute. I want to okay. get, get into some of the deeper things. We'll be right back. As the climate in our world grows more hostile toward our Christian worldview, Viewpoint is a program designed to help defend our faith. Each week, Bob Placey interviews guests who bring the Bible into focus. And we can be salt and light in this culture. Every description of Babylon in this book is going to come to pass. Helping us understand how relevant God's Word is for today. Viewpoint is completely viewer supported. If you've enjoyed and benefited from our interviews, we would ask you to consider helping us by supporting it financially. Your 20, 50, or even $100 monthly gift will help us continue to bring you more of these programs. Go to WTLW.com now and click Get Involved, or you can send a check to the address on your screen. Thank you for supporting Viewpoint. We're back with Dr. Frank Turek. He is the author of I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, but you got enough faith to be a Christian. I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, I want to ask you uh, real quick about a, a comment Aaron Rodgers recently made. He mm -hmm. said that he had kind of abandoned the faith of his parents. Aaron Rodgers, a quarterback for all of you non-sports fans mm -hmm. out there, the Green Bay Packers, said he kind of abandoned the faith of his parents. Mm -hmm. uh, he couldn't believe in a God who would want to condemn his mm -hmm beautiful creation to a fiery hell. Mm -hmm. He said Christianity was binary. It's us mm -hmm. and them, righteous against unrighteous, heaven against hell. And he, what I'm, I, as I was listening to that on the newscast, I'm thinking that is prevalent on college campuses sure. today, especially among professors. Mm -hmm. And it's just, how do you, well, first of all, I think, first of all, you've got to ask him, how did you come to that conclusion mm -hmm. that God wants to condemn half of his creation to hell? Where, where, where does he get in that from? Because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that God wants all people to be saved. And you right? wonder if that came out of a childhood someplace in a... Well, as I, I understand, I, I uh, Aaron Rodgers, he was brought up in a fundamentalist Christian mm -hmm. home, and apparently he's estranged from yeah. them right now. But look, uh, reality's binary. You either complete the pass or you don't, right? Sure. You either win the game or you don't. Uh, you're... You're, it, something's either true or false. I mean, that's just way, the way right. reality is. That's the way truth is. Either well, it's us versus truth, them or it's not. Maybe your truth. Well, yeah, but <laughs> is, is that true? <laughs> you know, is that true for everyone? Yeah. So yeah, it's self-defeating to say that um, there's no truth because it's a truth claim itself. Mm -hmm. If somebody says there's no truth, you ought to say, is that true? If somebody says that uh, truth is inclusive, uh, all things are true, you, w you would easily say to them, if I say all things are not true, am I contradicting you? 
<laughs> of course I yeah. am. So that's just reality that either God exists or he doesn't exist. Either there's a hell or there isn't. Either there's a heaven or there isn't. Just reality is binary. You can't get away from it. But that's where you start in, the, in, in your lecture series is with, is there truth? Yes. I mean, you've got four points. There. The first one, is there truth? Because right. a lot of people say, well, it's true for you. It's not true for me. It's relevant. It's, it's, it's relative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's the first question yeah, we ask to try and show whether Christianity is true mm -hmm. is, does truth exist? And we point out that when people say there's no truth, we ask them, is that true? If they say it's true for you, but not for me, we say, is that true for everybody? Is true for you, but not mm -hmm. for me, true for everybody? Because it's true for you, but not for me, is true for everybody. <laughs> then true for you, but not for me can't be true, true because it's true for everybody. See? No, this I is, follow that. I yeah. follow that. <laughs> this is known as a self-defeating statement. Mm -hmm. It's like saying I can't speak a word in English. Right. So the things that you hear in our culture, and there are many of these things you hear in our culture that are self-defeating. One of them is there's no truth. Another is to say all truth is relative, because that's not a relative truth, it's an absolute mm -hmm. truth. Uh, if someone says there are no absolutes, you ask them, are you absolutely sure? True. Because that's an absolute truth claim. If somebody says uh, you can't know truth, you ask them, how do you know that's true? Mm -hmm. if somebody says you ought not judge, that's a judgment. Why well, are you judging me for judging? They'll come back and say, Jesus said don't judge. Yeah, and I say, no, he didn't. He didn't say that. No, he didn't say that yeah. because there are no verses in the Bible. There's the verses were put in 500 yeah. years ago and you have to read the entire passage. It Jesus makes it said, a lot easier for me with the, with the verses. Yeah, it does. It makes it easier. <laughs> the problem is we tend to take verses out of context mm -hmm. and not read the whole passage. So the whole passage is judge not lest you be judged by the same standard you judge others, you be judged by that standard. So before you try and take the speck out of your brother's mm -hmm. eye, you hypocrite, which is a judgment, by the way, take your take the log out of your own eye first and then you'll be better able to help your brother. So Jesus is not telling us not to judge. He's telling us how to judge. In other words, don't judge yeah. hypocritically. He's telling us to take the speck out of our brother's eye, which is a judgment. Mm -hmm. He's simply saying, get that problem out of your life first so you can better help your brother. And this is your, your, your theory of the roadrunner. You're just running them down. Yeah, the, in yeah. the book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, we use what we call the roadrunner tactic because mm -hmm. it reminds us, and this is for the, the people that are as old as I am, you know, <laughs> Wiley Coyote yeah. and Roadrunner. You know, Wiley Coyote would always stop short, or Roadrunner would stop short of the cliff, and Wiley Coyote would oh go God. past him and be hanging in midair until he realized he had no ground to stand on. And mm -hmm. that's what you can do with people who utter self-defeating yeah. statements. You can show them their claim has no ground to stand on. So they say, if there's, they say there's no truth, you say, is that true? You pull out the foundation from their statement. Mm -hmm. That's so we, the we've got to tactic. start with truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got to start at that point. And then you go from there, you, you go into, if there's truth. The next question is, does God, does God exist? exist? Is it true that God exists? Yeah. And uh, th that's the second question we cover. And we give evidence that God exists. And the three major arguments we give for God's existence, uh, one is from the beginning of the universe. Uh, the second argument is from the design of the universe and the design of life. And the third argument is from morality, the, uh, the, the, the idea that there's objective right and wrong out there. If there's no God, nothing is objectively right and wrong, but everybody understands certain things are right and other things are wrong. For example, it's right to love, it's wrong to say torture babies for fun, okay? Right. If that's the case, if it's wrong to torture babies for fun, there has to be a standard outside of humanity Otherwise, everything's just a matter of opinion. You know, that's just your opinion against sure. a baby torturer's opinion. And so we point out that with those three arguments, the fact that the universe had a beginning, that things are designed, and that there's an objective moral law and objective moral obligations, mm -hmm. you can arrive at the conclusion that there's a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, moral, personal, intelligent creator who created all things and sustains all Creators things. All. So we go through all this evidence on a college mm -hmm. campus or at churches. We go to churches as well, and we show people why Christianity is true, why God exists. Yeah, I would, later on I want to get into a couple of those things, the mm -hmm. cosmological sure. uh, proof. But uh, then you go into uh, are miracles possible? Yes, that's the third question out of four. This, not everybody believes in miracles. I know it's pretty. But odd. they have to to know if I mean if there if there's a designer out there and we were created, and the universe was created, there's got to be a miracle in there someplace. Well, the greatest miracle in the Bible is the first verse. In the beginning, God yeah. created the heavens and the earth. Because if that verse is true, every other verse is at least possible, right? Mm -hmm. If God can create the universe out of nothing, can he do whatever he wants that's not logically impossible inside the universe? Of course. And the interesting thing, Bob, is that even atheists are admitting the data for the first miracle. For example, yeah. Stephen Hawking, who was a, a prominent mm -hmm. atheist physicist sure. until he died a few years ago, said, 
Almost everyone now believes that the universe and time itself had a beginning at the Big Bang. The In Big other Bang. words, space, time, and matter had a beginning. Well, if space, time, and matter had a beginning, then what could have caused that? Only a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, personal, intelligent creator. That's what we mean by God. Now, you'll get to uh, stay that in a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. I believe in the Big Bang Theory, and yeah. you get a lot of... <gasps> yeah, I don't believe in the Big Bang Theory, but I believe in the evidence for the Big, the big bang. bang. There was a Big there Bang. There was a beginning. Yeah. There was, I, I just know who yeah. banged it, that's yeah. what we say. You know, there has to be a, be a banger if there's a, mm -hmm. if there's a, a bang. And um, that being, who's spaceless and timeless, doesn't have a beginning himself, because if you're timeless, you don't have a beginning. Right. So he is the uncaused first cause. Whatever created the universe is the uncaused first cause. Do we have to say that's God? No, we don't have to say it's God, but we, because people always say, um, well, how do you know it's the Christian God? And my answer sure. is we don't yet. We mm -hmm. haven't done enough research yet. We've got to see if Jesus is who he said he is in order to know that the God of the Big Bang or the creator of the Big Bang, the cause of the Big mm -hmm. Bang is the God of the Bible. And you don't know that until you look at the historical evidence for Jesus. It turns out to be mm -hmm. the God of the Bible, but you don't know that just from the Big Bang. But then we got to go to your fourth point. Which is, is the New Testament New, true? Is it true? Yeah. Is it telling the truth about Jesus in particular and the mm -hmm. resurrection? Because if Jesus rose from the dead, game over Christianity is true. Of course, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, game over it's yeah. false, as Paul said. So Christianity is a religious worldview that can be tested by evidence. It's an historical claim that Jesus rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. Is it true? And so we give evidence that, yes, he rose from the dead. And if he rose from the dead, then Christianity is true because Jesus is God and whatever God teaches is true. So Jesus promised the entire Old Testament or he said the Old Testament was the word of God and he promised the New Testament. Just a reminder, Dr. Turek's website is crossexamine.org. It's packed with great videos and information to help strengthen your faith. In a moment, we'll conclude today's interview with Dr. Turek. Not only can you watch Viewpoint each week, but you can also listen to it on demand as a podcast. You can go to WTLW.com and under videos, click Viewpoint, and you'll see the selection of interviews. You can also subscribe by searching for Viewpoint with Bob Placey on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. And remember to share the podcast with your friends. <laughs> but getting getting back to I mean you, you got to get back to the existence of God and mm -hmm. a, an intelligent design if if, mm -hmm. if you believe all that the cosmological approach when you when you start getting into that with mm -hmm. with uh, you got a whole room full of college students you've got physicists you got all kinds of people in there uh, how do you take that approach how do you break that apart the cosmological well that's approach. the first argument is the mm -hmm. cosmological argument it's basically the argument that says if the universe had a beginning it must have had a beginner. And the atheists are admitting the universe had a beginning. It's not even controversial. So I don't even have to go through much evidence. I just say, look, everyone agrees the universe had a beginning. If it had a beginning, what could have caused, the, yeah. what could have caused a spaceless, uh, or what could have caused space, time, and matter to come into existence? The, only, the only thing I think yeah. would be a spaceless, timeless, immaterial cause. What, what's their answer to that? Oh, I mean, if we they, don't. There knows there's a beginning. There's got to be a, a beginner. Well, l let me give you Stephen Hawking's answer okay. and see if this makes sense to you. This is a quote from Hawking in one of the last books he wrote. Here's what he said. Because there's a law like gravity, the universe can and will create itself out of nothing. Does that make any sense to you? Where'd gravity come from? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, here's what John Lennox... Because there's a law like yeah, gravity. Okay. Uh, why are there laws? Laws yes, come from lawgivers. Sure. But anyway, John Lennox, the brilliant uh, Christian... A mathematician and philosopher from Oxford University who debated Richard Dawkins. He also wrote a book on Stephen Hawking, and here's what he said about Hawking's statement that the universe can and will create itself out of nothing because there's a law like gravity. Lennox said, when brilliant scientists say nonsense, it's still nonsense. <laughs> right? <laughs> Even if they say it. That's right. That's right. No, uh, there's no atheistic explanation for how the universe could come into existence yeah. out of nothing. Timeless, spaceless, immaterial It seems being. it has to be a timeless, a spaceless, being. immaterial, personal being to create. Um, and it's not just that we lack a natural explanation. It's not a God of the gaps argument. Because if nature had a beginning, by definition, nature can't be the cause. It's got to be something beyond nature, something we would call supernature. So they're calling it, they would say there'd be a natural 
beginning of some yeah kind. but how how can how can there be a natural beginning if nature didn't exist that's the point yeah. nature didn't exist so there's got to be something beyond nature that brought it into existence that's what we call supernature like when we the word super just means beyond so mm -hmm. we call superman he's beyond yeah, the man right. we call supernature or supernatural beyond the natural so out there someplace there's got to be a beginner there's got to be somebody who's beyond space beyond time immaterial mm -hmm personal because it, it, the design shows intelligence yeah yeah and in order to create someone has to make a choice so mm -hmm. only persons can make choices so you get some attributes of the god of the bible just from the cosmological argument now as i said in the last segment that doesn't mean it's the god of the bible it could be allah it could be some other god mm -hmm. But when you continue to look at the evidence and you look at the New Testament documents and you look at the evidence for the resurrection, I think the best conclusion is when you're done looking at all the evidence is the same being that walked out of the tomb 1,987 years ago is the same being who's in his divine nature created mm -hmm. the universe out of nothing. From way out there, out of nothing. I mean, you, when you look at the universe, did you get... I mean, it boggles my mind. You showed some, some slides from the Hubble telescope mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I'm thinking, wow. We are small. Yeah, we are. And yeah. God cared enough to, to create right. us. Right. How, how fragile is that universe? Well, that's the second argument, the teleological argument mm -hmm. or the design argument. And there's something scientists have discovered in the past several decades that the universe is fine-tuned, meaning if you were to change any one of a number of factors mm -hmm. about our universe virtually imperceptibly, we wouldn't be here. Hawking, the atheist again, put it this way. He said, if the expansion rate of the universe was different by one part in a thousand million million a second after the Big Bang, the universe would have collapsed back on itself or never developed galaxies. One million... A thousand million million, 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 million or just yeah. it, forget it. I just mean, that space, that, that yeah. second, if, it, if, it, if the timing would have been off that if, much. The, if the expansion rate was any yeah. different, mm -hmm. um, a second after the Big Bang. Uh, and how do you explain that? It seems that the same being that created space, time, and matter is the same being that fine tuned the expansion rate of the universe to be what it needed to be so this universe could come into existence. Right. And there's still evidence out there. Oh, sure. And, like, and there's other. Uh, of, of a, of a, what you called surge. Of, a, of a, the Big Bang. Yeah, that's the evidence for the Big Bang. Normally, I don't even go through that evidence on a college campus mm -hmm. because it's not controversial. Yeah. The atheists because are they, agreeing they, they it had to be. They accept it. Yeah. The question is, what caused mm -hmm. the universe? And I'm saying, it seems to me, it's got to be a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, personal, intelligent cause. And the design is so finite that it... Uh, yeah, you change any one of a number of factors about our universe, none of us are here. It's as if there's a control room of, for the universe somewhere, and every dial is set to the precise number it needs to be set mm -hmm. at, and if you were to go into that control room and move that dial just a hair, one way or the other, the universe wouldn't mm -hmm. exist. But you get back to the arguments of, of Darwin and how we came to be on this earth, and it all starts with an amoeba, and they, they explain it that way. Where, where was Darwin with all this? I mean, it takes more, more faith to be a Darwinian than it does. It does, but remember, a life, that's a second aspect to the design mm -hmm. argument. I mean, you can design the universe, but then to, to give life to that universe. Right. Life requires a universe, and we already mm -hmm. see the universe, A is created and B is designed. So by the time you get to life, even if you could explain life by nature, by natural laws, you haven't gotten rid of God. You still need a creator and a designer to create the universe and create uh, a, a, a fine-tuned universe. But even as atheists will admit now, nobody has an explanation for the origin of life. There is no naturalistic or, or explanation for the origin of life. They're setting more and more of Darwin aside. They are, and uh, even- Does that leave them naked in their explanation? Well, for Dar Darwinism is supposed to explain subsequent life. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to explain mm -hmm. initial, initial life. life. Even Richard Dawkins, the famous Darwinist, says no one knows how life began, mm -hmm. okay, from a naturalistic perspective. Uh, but how did subsequent life come into existence? Well, that's a question we can debate. Uh, I think the evidence is very strong against Darwinism, mm -hmm. macroevolution. Yeah. And we could go through some of the evidence here, but it's, it would probably take too long. Mm -hmm. Uh, but even if it were true, that doesn't get rid of the need for a creator. It doesn't mean Christianity's faults. I mean, God could still exist, and Jesus rose from the dead, right. and Christianity would still be true, even if macroevolution was true. It would give us maybe problems with biblical inerrancy in the Old Testament, but it wouldn't mean that Christianity's faults. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think macroevolution is true. I'm just saying yeah. even if it is, it doesn't, it doesn't support atheism. Let me just put it that way. Right. 
at that, at that point in time, if it doesn't support atheism, what does it support? <laughs> well, people are trying to find naturalistic to explanations for a life. And mm -hmm. that's a fair that's a fair endeavor for science, to try and find naturalistic sure. explanations. We should. We should try and find that. But A, when we can't find it, and B, when we have positive evidence pointing toward intelligence, then we ought to say, well, maybe there's yeah, an intelligent just, being out. And let me, let me give you an example yeah. of this, Bob. Uh, in every living thing is DNA, right? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a we, software yeah, program, right. right? And it's thousands or billions of letters long. In every, in every cell in your body, my body, mm -hmm. There's a software program that's 3.2 billion letters long. All the letters are in the right order, okay? Uh, and to, to, see, to show you what I mean by this, let's suppose you're walking along the beach and you see in the sand, John loves Mary. What are you going to assume? The waves made that <laughs> message or crabs came out of the water? It's and possible. We, yeah, no, it's, not po it's possible. It's not, not reasonable. Not, not reasonable or probable. Well, if John yeah. loves Mary requires an intelligence mm -hmm. to create, then what about a message 3.2 billion letters long? It's the same yeah. kind of thing. It's a message comes from minds, mm -hmm. right? Or a message always comes from a mind. If John loves Mary requires a mind, how about a message 3.2 billion letters long in every cell in your body? That would seem to require a mind too. And so when we see that, we don't just lack a natural explanation. It's not a God of the gaps argument to say, gee, I, I don't have a natural explanation, so let me just put God in the gap of my knowledge. When you see John loves Mary, or more forcefully, mm -hmm. 3.2 billion letters long worth of a message, you have positive evidence for an intelligent being. Very positive. Yeah, so it, it's pointing toward intelligence, not just away from naturalism. Well, we got to get into a whole lot more of this, but I don't think we're going to have time on this no, show. No, you got to get the but, book. But, well, the book, mm -hmm. several books. You got, you got the book out there, uh, Correct, Not Politically Correct. Correct, Not Politically Correct. And talking about same sex marriage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is extremely controversial. Yep. And uh, the one on Stealing from God. Why Atheists Need God to Make Their oh, Case. So that's the, not that's about the my subtitle. It's not about my tithing. What's that? No, it's, it's not, not about, about tithing. No. <laughs> why, why, and that, that, that interests me. Why do atheists need God to make their argument for Well, I'll just give one quick God. example. Yeah. There's like seven examples in the book, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but evil, for example. Atheists say, well, there's too much evil in the world, so there can't be a good God. Okay. It makes a little sense. It, it might. Think so. A good God wouldn't, why, right, would he, why, right. would he, why would he create evil? The problem is, for atheists, is that evil doesn't exist unless good exists. Mm -hmm. But good doesn't exist unless God exists. So in order for them to That'd say something is evil, yes, in order for them to say something is evil, good must exist, but good only exists in an objective way if God exists. So in order for them to say something's evil, they have to steal a standard from God to say it's evil. So they're stealing, they're stealing from, God from God while they're arguing against him. That's the problem for them. Okay, that's just one yeah. of many different things they steal from God to say he doesn't exist. Just a reminder, Dr. Turk's website is crossexamine.org. It's packed with great videos and information to help strengthen your faith. If you like what you're hearing, make sure you follow us on YouTube as well as our podcast. The Viewpoint with Bob Placey podcast is available on all podcast platforms, and all of our interviews are available for you to listen to on demand. <laughs>